This week we have a double Parshios, Tazria and Mitzora. And we know that the basic theme of the Parshios, Tazria and Mitzora, is the hal- are the halachas of a person who gets some type of spiritual disease. We call it leprosy in English, even though that's really not an accurate translation. It's some type of skin disease which can affect a person, their house, their clothing. And our rabbis tell us that usually a person will be affected by leprosy for speaking Lashon Hara, for slandering somebody else. And Parshat Tazria details for us the different ways a person may contact this disease, how it looks like, the different forms of this disease, and the different processes the person has to go through to see whether it spreads or not, and the different aspects till the disease stops. But Dad Shave, they sit alone and uh, away from the people outside all the machanot. They're uh, secluded, and it goes through the process. Parsha Mitzorah then begins with the purification process. When this disease finally stops, leaves the person, what is the process of purification that the person has to go through? It's within this process of purification that I'd like to focus in Mirz Hashem today on one very specific aspect, raise one specific question, and from this gain perhaps an insight into what should be going through our minds when we read these parshios every year, even though we don't have a base of Mikdash and we don't have the spiritual disease as the same form affecting us in the same way. But the lessons we can definitely learn and derive for our lives. So the Chumash tells us, source number one, that Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, This shall be the law of the Mitzorah on the day of, the, of his purification. He shall be brought to the Kohen, and the Kohen sees that indeed the affliction has been healed. And then in, in verse 5, um, and then in verse uh, 4, the Kohen shall command, and for the person being purified, there shall be taken two live clean birds, cedar wood, crimson thread, and hyssop. And the Kohen shall command, and the one bird shall be slaughtered in an earth, earthenware vessel over spring water. As for the live bird, he shall take it from him with the cedar wood and the crimson thread and the hyssop. He shall dip them and the live bird into the blood of the bird that was slaughtered over the spring water, and then sprinkle it seven times upon the person who is being purified. It's interesting to note, as Rabbi Blach notes in Pnei Dad in source number three, that one of the fundamental aspects that we need to understand when we read this section about the specifics of the purification of taking birds and the crimson and the cedar wood and the different aspects and the ceremony that uh, ensues is Istakal Baraiso Vara Alma, that God looks into the Torah and creates the world. And therefore, it is through the directives of the Torah. It is through the very specific aspects that the Torah mandates. This is how the person is going to be purified. And the Pini Das notes the following. He says, Ki ra'ui ladat, the beginning of three, kodem kol, we have to know, Ki ha'roshem shel sim dvarim v'simanim k'tanim ka'elu, eno kalush kol kach k'moshini d'melechora. At first glance, we say to ourselves, what difference does it make if you take in a zova hyssop or tolat, this type of wormwood or cedar wood, take a different type of tree, take a different type of plant? No. Each and every detail that is found here is found here for a reason. And, and this is important, that all of these processes have an impact, have an effect on a person, even if a person may not even be aware of what effect that they have, there is an effect going on, there is a purification going on, and we have to understand that this makes a Roshem al Hadam Umagi'im bin Afshaw, and it affects the Umini'im bin Afshaw, it affects the person. It makes a profound effect on the person themselves. If we understand this premise, that all the details are found here are not by accident, and they all bring us a composite picture of what this purity is about. So I'd like to focus Mirza Hashem on one particular aspect of the list that is found in source number four. There were two live clean birds taken cedar wood, crimson thread, and hyssop. 
So our rabbis and Rashi brings down that the birds are a reminder of a sin, that he spoke Lashon Hara, and birds chatter all the time. You know, birds are, uh, are making noise all the time, and that's a reminder for the individual of the sin. Why specifically the crimson thread in Hyssop? So, as uh, Rav Duner explains in source number four from England, he says, that, and other Mepharshim as well, based on Rashi, it's that the crimson thread in Hyssop are the representation of that which is Shafel, that which is lowly, right? The, the crimson thread is the, the Hyssop, it's the lowest of the bushes. This wormwood is the lowest of the animals. And it's not enough for the person speaking Lashon Hara to recognize what he did wrong. But rather a person, Haderecha Yechida,